Coach Matt Painter. Uh, raise your hand and get a microphone to you. Go ahead, Mike. From your vantage point, what was it like to see Mason do what he did oh. tonight? Oh, it was great to see you know somebody get into a rhythm and you know knock down some shots. And obviously, you know he played well in the first half and took some rhythm threes and knocked them down. And then obviously we started in the second half because he played so well. And then he just you know he kind of exploded that first you know six seven minutes. Man, back here. How, it looked like the game plan a little bit for you was to keep Lundy and Pickett as much pressure on them as possible. If anybody else hit it, they hit it. Is that some of your game plan coming in? Because we've seen Penn State hit a lot of three-point shots lately. Right. Well, we, we wanted to trap Pickett and then uh, rotate you know, out of it. And we had some breakdowns there when we subbed in the second half. They, you know, we had guys that not rotating the way they were supposed to there. But you know, they're a good team. You know, it's... I think our ability to to keep Funk under wraps was it was a huge point of the game. Like you know, obviously, Lundy shoots the ball well. Um, you know, Pickett has a solid game. You know, he has 12 points, seven assists, five rebounds. And, you know, he's one of the best players in our league. Um, but we'll kind of take that. That's how good he's gotten, right? You know, he, his his ability to rebound, his ability to pass, ability to score. It's not like you know, 26 points, eight rebounds, I think seven assists or something like that in our first game, which he was just phenomenal in the first half. So uh, we have a lot of respect for Pickett because we know he makes them go, but we wanted to really stay with Funk and then do a better job on Lundy. With that being said, Lundy hit a, he, he hit a couple of real tough ones too, but you know, he normally does, you know, he, he's, a, he, he's a good player. Hey Matt, um, I asked Ethan about playing defense for you and how he came in as a big scorer and how satisfied, right. he, yeah, he said he's satisfied, he enjoys playing defense. What does that mean to you that you're getting through to these guys that maybe big scores, but defense is so important? Yeah, well, intelligent people figure things out, you know, and, and so as you get there and you don't play much as a freshman and you play a little bit more as a sophomore, you know, you want to you wanna start, you know, you want to play major minutes and you, you got to figure out who you are at this level, not who you are at the high school level. And Ethan's always been able to score and pass the basketball. And then now it's kind of role definition. It's like, you know, what do you want to become? And that just kind of organically evolves in coaching. Like when you get into recruiting, like you can't sit there and tell everybody that they're going to play shortstop and then you're going to have a lot of mad guys. You just, you know, whoever kind of earns it gets it. And, you know, he's earned it. He's worked really hard and does a lot of little things for us. And you got to give a lot of energy to be able to guard a guy like Jalen Pickett. And I thought that's what he did. Just, you know, staying with it, being resilient, and just continue to fight him. But no, Ethan's been great for us. Matt, we, we also heard Ethan say that there were some of the other teams he's been on here might have kind of looked past this game to Saturday. Um, right. Obviously, this team didn't do that and hasn't really this year. Is there anything you can point to as to why this team is more focused on making that basis? Yeah, but also, like, you always got to keep into consideration when the ball goes in, everything else looks pretty good, right? So if we struggle shooting the basketball tonight, people would say you're not ready, when in reality, you just didn't shoot the ball well, or they just defended you better, whatever that might be. Um, you know, you have a decision to make when you play us. And sometimes we don't know the decision. So, like, if you play somebody and they've played 20 games and they handle ball screen, their ball screen defense the same way, every all, all 20 games, you know in game 21 that's their ball screen defense, right? So you can prepare for that. But when you have Zach Eady, you really deep down don't know how they're going to do things. And we had success in the pleasure against them. And so we knew something would be different, and it was. And they did a good job against Michigan and then bottling them up and then doubling. So we, we felt like they were going to come double um, us at that time. So I don't try to keep it from like, hey, we have a rivalry game on Saturday, and now we're playing somebody. Like, that's an NCAA tournament team. Like, Penn State's an NCAA tournament team. So that's what I told our guys. Like, how can't you get up to play a team that's, you know, probably going to be in the NCAA tournament and, you know, have that kind of energy? But how can't you play when each game matters to try to hopefully win the Big Ten championship? Like, the, like you know, you, you start losing games, like that's going to affect you. And that's where we were last year. You know, we were 14-6, and six, which, you know, is a good record. Winning 70% of your conference games in this league is still good. But we should have been better. We, and we let things slip away, and that's my fault, and that's our guys' fault. Like, we, we let some stuff slip away. Now you have a chance with this group to not let things slip away. Like, let's be ready to roll. And these guys were, and I thought they were 
thought we were sluggish in the start of the second half against Maryland. You know, just to start with, just taking care of the basketball. And even if we don't make shots, like keep getting shots. When you have a great rebounding team, keep getting shots. Like keep getting quality shots. Because now, if it goes in, great. But if it doesn't, you have a chance to now get that offensive rebound. But if you're taking good shots and missing them and they're getting them, you're still going to set your defense. It's still not the worst thing in the world. But when you take bad shots and you turn the ball over, you know, now you're in transition and it's hard to catch up, especially when you have big people. Talking about Mason Gillis this year, a lot of times you said his production comes just organically. You don't draw anything up. Right. In the second half when he gets hot, are you drawing anything up for him tonight? Yes, the thing's got rain for him. <laughs> just the genius. I, I mean, no, yeah. <laughs> No, we, we ran that base pin there at the end and, and got him a shot, which people have held and just like kind of switched it out and, and did some different things. We ran a, a, just a simple flash to go high and low, high and low in the second half, and they didn't go with him. So, he, you know, we're, we're running it to throw the ball to Zach, and he just flashes, and they don't. Two other times, um, he just triple threat, and they backed up off of him, and he just shot it. Then we brought him on a, just a straight pin after they did all that, and we knew the four was doubling. But we didn't think the four would double from ball side right in front of Penn State's bench. So I was going to run something different that I just thought, man, maybe this young guy will not will leave him after he's hit these three threes. And he's not supposed to. But maybe he'll leave him because that's what they're, they've been doubling them before, but we hadn't brought the four ball side. So we brought him ball side, threw it in, and just held him there. And they went down and doubled him. We got another three. So just trying to, once somebody does that and you deal with Zach, now when you throw it in, just trying to schematically put people that are different in different spots and let Zach know what his reads are. So you're going to have this guy for a layup, you're going to have this guy for a jumper, but if they take that away, here's option B. And just, you know, take your time and be patient. It's, it's good to be 7-4 when you're double. You can be patient and just see over people. Uh, Matt, the matchup between Mike and Shrewsbury, your matchups are starting to add up now. After a couple of years, what's that chess match like going up against him, knowing that he knows what you want to do, but right. you also know some of the things he likes to do? Yeah, it's um, neither one of us play, so um, <laughs> it, it you know it's not what you know; it's what your players know. I don't mean to be funny there, even though I try to be funny at times. <laughs> um, yeah, you you know you go, and sometimes you think like, ah, oh, man, like when we run like after timeout stuff, I would say sixty to seventy percent of it is from him. So it's a little surreal, right? And so when he came on board, he handled the defense for the Boston Celtics for six years, but he handled our offense. And I just kind of compared it to like a prosecuting attorney and a defense attorney. And so like that prosecuting attorney doesn't make a lot of money, right? And so like now he wants to make money after being a prosecuting attorney and now he wants to go to the defense side, but he has no idea of being a defense attorney, but he knows how he thinks because he's always battled him. And so then he just flipped it and went to the, all the after timeout stuff. I just said, whatever you guys struggled to guard when you were the defensive guy of the Celtics, I said, I want to run that stuff. And let's just flip it on people. So he just took from about 15 organizations, like three, four plays from each one of them. And then we, we just kind of went from there. So now when you come here and you come full circle, it's, it's a player's game, right? You got to have organization, you got to have structure, you got to know what you're doing. But at the end of the day, they have to have that wisdom and that knowledge to carry it out. So um, in each one of the games we've went against each other, we've had Zach Eady. And, and, and so like I, I think from a, I think our personnel has been better than their personnel. So I don't think that's fair when you look at things of that nature because we don't have to scheme against them and they have to <laughs> scheme against us. And if they don't scheme against us, you're going to see what happens in the second half of that last year. And now that's what he flipped right there. They just fell asleep with Mason Gillis three or four times, and they shouldn't have. But I, I thought his game plan and what he was doing, dragging Edie out with him, was very intelligent. And then I thought the quick double right there, you still got a double in my opinion. Um, but if you got the ability to fight and get him out, like that's the key. Like can you, can you physically get him out? The people that did the best work against him was St. Peter's. And their big guy was 6'8", 2'10", 2, 2, so take it for what it's worth. It, it's also, you know, the fight inside people. Like, are you willing just to fight the whole game? And then can you fight without fouling? You know, a couple of those bigs for St. Peter's were able to do that. And a lot of people aren't. You know, a lot of people aren't. They just, they get fatigued and all of a sudden they do something stupid.
and they grab him, they hold him, they put their knee up, it's keister, you know. What's that been like? You guys didn't think you were gonna hear keister, did you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, uh, when Mason is shooting the way he is, just how does that make life easier for the other four guys on the court when he's as hot as he was tonight? Well, sure, like they, they you know, their antenna should go up the, to get him the basketball, and I think it did. You know, whether that was Zach or that was Braden, Braden obviously had a good game with nine assists and zero turnovers. Um, anytime you have your point guard do that, you can out-rebound that team by close to 20 rebounds and then have the same amount of turnovers. And then you got a guy hitting nine threes, like you're gonna win the game. Um, but no, it's it's good and like our guys are excited about it. They know how much time he's put in and it's hard. Like it's, it's hard. Most people will feel through their offense and you can't be that way as a player because your offense will come and go. But your defense, your concentration, your rebounding, taking care of the basketball, those are things that always trap. And, and so like you've got to be solid in those areas. So Mason's worked really, really hard. And uh, it's just great to see all this hard work pay off. Last one, Mike. Uh, Matt, second straight game, you've held a team with two offensive rebounds. Right. What does that tell you about how well you guys are rebounding right now? Yeah, well, they're, they, they don't offensive rebound. They set their defense. Right. So. And, and so some people, it's still good because Michigan State does offensive rebound. And then one of their offensive rebounds was a team rebound. So. Yeah, that's, that's some consistency in terms of just trying to stay out of road. It, it's hard sometimes to rebound when you get into rotations too. So I, I think that was a, a big statement by our guys, just you know, back-to-back -back games, being able to keep the other team off the offensive glass. Hey, Matt, let's uh, talk about Micah one more time. I've heard you talk willingly about Micah. He's your friend. You, right. my friend. What's his program? I mean, seeing him build that program, how satisfying is that for you to see a guy that you know is building a program in the tradition of Penn State or in college that's right. you know, not traditionally been basketball powerhouse? Yeah, I you know you you watch the games and you watch him at Penn State, his ability to get fans in the crowd, I mean, you know, fans in the seat, excuse me, and like that, I think that's the key for the consistency there. It, it's kind of harder there because they can come in on weekends and then you know, you know, during the week, and so they they've they really had to battle that. Um, and, and he's done a really, really good job there. But um, he's just a great teacher of basketball. You know, he, he, he gets along with people. He's got an edge to him. So he has a really good balance about that. And that's, you know, it's a, it's a people, you know, it's the people in your program and it's the relationships. And, and he's great in relationships. He, he's very authentic um, and straightforward with guys. He tells, you know, he's a truth teller. He draws those hard lines, um, but he does it in a diplomatic way. That's it's a hard thing to do with young guys is when you draw hard lines, you're in the middle of a season. It's a, it's a really hard thing to do because, you know, but they appreciate it in time. They don't appreciate it a lot of time in the moment, but they, they appreciate it in time. But no, he, he's done a fabulous job there, and I hope they get in the NCAA tournament. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.